Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this one, we're looking at password hashing for web security. How exactly do you encrypt your password for your users and why? All right, so if you've been following along very well so far, we've been saving our passwords as clear text. So if we go to our uh, database in the table, uh, the database MyBookDB, that's the database we're working with. And if I go to the users table, I'm going to notice that in the password column, there's simply some text there, one, two, three, four, and the other one goes up to eight. So now imagine somebody hacks into uh, your system and they manage to steal your database. So if you've got a thousand users in here, all their passwords are going to be uh, visible just like that with the, because they're in plain text. Now, the thing is, for somebody to actually get your database, it means they don't actually need these passwords. Because if I have access to your, uh, if I have access to your database of your website, I don't really need to go back and log in uh, in order to get any information that I want. I can simply read the information directly from the database. So at that point, the passwords are actually useless if somebody has gotten your database. So why do we go through the trouble of actually encrypting them? Okay. So the reason we do that is because once we encrypt the information, it's, it's no longer plain text like this. The characters are changed and they become more obscure. Now, a lot of users will use the same password and the same email for multiple websites. So if your website is compromised and your database has been uh, downloaded by hackers, it means the hackers can use the same email and the same password and test it on all websites. They can go and test it on YouTube, test it on Facebook and so on and so forth until they find a website where it actually works. So this is why we have to secure our users' uh, passwords so that just in case, uh, our database is compromised, their credentials are not compromised with them. So what exactly is encryption? So let's go to, uh, let me open a page here. Let me enlarge uh, this text a little bit. So imagine you, you want to send a letter, like how we used to do it in the old days where you send an actual letter where you actually write some text before uh, cell phones. So you could write something like, hi there, I want you to come over. So you put this text uh, on a piece of paper and you send it to uh, somebody and you want this information to be private. So first of all, you may, you may give somebody uh, to go and give the actual person that you want the message to be conveyed to. So there might be three or four uh, people in between uh, the actual intended recipient. So those people, all they have to do is open the piece of paper and they can actually read your message. And this is not good if your message is private. So what you could do to avoid these people from actually reading your message is to encrypt it. So how you do that is, for example, here, if you look closely, there's, um, there's a, a few letter O here. For example, this O, if I move it, if I select all the O's here, if I change letter O to letter, uh, let's say T. So right there, as you can see, uh, it has already kind of obscured the message by just simply changing one letter. But then I can go ahead and replace every single letter here with a different letter, just same letter. So for example, in this case, the formula would be, uh, a is equal to uh, B or then C is equal to D, E is equal to F. So what the, uh, what the, this would be the, uh, the formula for encrypting my information. So if I'm using a computer to encrypt this information, what the computer will do is look for letter A and replace it with B, look for letter C, replace it with D and so on and so forth to a point where 
the information is unreadable. However, when you send the information to the intended recipient, the recipient must be able to actually read the information or the encryption process is useless. So for the user to read, they must know this key right here, and then they must work backwards to recreate the message and replace wherever there is a, a B, they replace with A, wherever there is D, they replace with C until the message is readable again. So doing this is a very simple way of encrypting data. So this, this text might end up looking something like this, uh, something like this. Okay, so at this point, you can see that this message is completely unreadable. Now, keep in mind that even the spaces can be replaced with either letters or numbers or symbols and so on so that it looks like a weird message altogether, something like that. So this is the basic idea of encryption. So when the recipient gets their, uh, the information, gets the information, they can reverse it back to actually a readable message. Now, if somebody in between were to get your key, this key right here, then they can still read your information. So this key is called the algorithm, right? This is the formula or algorithm algorithm I have no idea if that's the actual spelling but something like that so we'll, we'll shortcut it to algo so this is the algo that we use we are using right now to do that now this kind of encryption is called two-way encryption because I have to encrypt the information send it over and the recipient is supposed to be able to decrypt it back uh, into this message. So this one is called a two-way uh, two -way encryption. Okay. Now, two-way encryption is not very secure, as you can imagine, because if somebody has your key, then they can reverse uh, the message at any point. So I'm not going to go into details on how uh, modern computers work to avoid uh, giving out these keys because there's what we call end-to-end uh, -end encryption, which is the most secure so far. But I won't go into details on that one. So what we're going to look at instead is one-way encryption. Uh, now, what one-way encryption does is if I encrypt this message right here, the result of that message cannot be reversed back into this okay so once i encrypt it i cannot reverse it back into this uh, it's not impossible but uh, it would take a million years or so to reverse so let me give you an example of one-way encryption so for example let's say i have a word hello what i could do with uh, hello is i could turn the letters into numbers for example i, I represent them i change them into those numbers okay so H is represented by three and so on and so on. And then when I'm done with this, I can add the result of uh, this, let's say three plus four, that's seven. Uh, I'm too lazy to calculate, so I'm going to use my trusty calculator. Okay, so let's do this. So we have three plus four, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7. So the result is 25. Now, we have 25 here. Now, it's very difficult for anyone to know where, how we got to this 25, uh, what letters we added together to make 25. Because 10, uh, or 20, rather, plus 5 would still give us 25, right? So it's very difficult to know what the original numbers were given this result, okay? This is why one-way encryption is very difficult if I give you just 25 to know that uh, the beginning was the word hello, okay? So this is why this is called one-way encryption. It's very difficult to revert this. Now, this is very simplified. The actual formulas are very complex and they're beyond the scope of this video. So this is just a simplified version to give you an example of how the one-way encryption would work. Now, of course, there are many uh, words that can give 25 in this case. That's why the 
actual algorithms we use are more complex so they give a unique value every time as much as possible now you ask why would you need to encrypt something and never be able to decrypt it well it still works uh, for passwords so let's see exactly how we can do that with some actual uh, examples so now there are a few uh, algorithms that have been created by some very smart people that we actually use on the web today and the most popular uh, at some point was called md5 md5 now md5 creates a 32 character string okay now if i what this means is if i encrypt this sentence the result of doing md5 encryption on this message is going to uh, have 32 characters so i'm going to have 32 characters if i encrypt this whole sentence however even if i encrypt just the word hi i'm still going to get 32 characters as the result okay so there's another uh one called sha1 uh, i think it means a secure hashing algorithm uh, very plain and simple so this one uh, creates, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's uh, 40 characters. And then we have SHA-256 that creates something like 64 characters. So the more characters, usually the better, the more secure. But using any of these uh, hashing algorithms is fine for your password. Uh, you, don't need, you don't need it to, be, to go completely overboard in doing these things. So you can use one of these it's going to be fine okay so let's do some practical examples and see how these things work in actual practice okay so to begin with uh, let me go to my um, my folder uh, where is my folder right here ah, there we go okay so we have our website here with the login page so let's just play with the login page at the top here we can display some data so I'll load in my login page. So just at the very top here, uh, don't type along with this. I'm simply messing around. So I'm going to reverse everything back when I'm done. Okay. So all I want here, let me just give it the command to die so that it doesn't load the rest of the page. I just want to use the top part there. So, so for example, let's echo a, a sentence like, uh, hello there, somewhere there, something like that. Let me save that. And let's come back to our website here and let me zoom in so we have hello there and now we want to encrypt hello there so it's very simple to do in order to encrypt this all we have to do is say hash like so and then it's going to ask you what algorithm do you want to use so in this case we can use md5 or we can use sha1 or sha256 so let's try md5 first something like that and what's the data that we want to encrypt so we're just going to name it data like so so here instead of doing this we're going to say data uh, is equal to hello there and then we encrypt the data so let me save that and if I run this obviously I'll get an empty page until I actually echo this so let me echo like so there we go and now we can see that we have echoed this information. Now, if I add a number two here at the end, just to change the original data and refresh, you see that the numbers have changed, but if you notice, they're exactly the same length. So I could add some gibberish at the end here, and you will notice that the length remains the same. You can actually confirm this by using the uh, the function string length which comes with PHP something like that let's wrap this into the uh, string length so that we can count the length of the string that has been returned and you see that it's 32 characters okay no matter what I do here it will still remain 32 characters okay even if I just uh, I'm hashing just that one thing, 32 uh, characters. All right, so this is one of uh, 
the hashing algorithm. So let's try SHA-1 and you're going to see that uh, the number increases to 40 and the other one will increase it to 64. So it's okay, you can use any of these three. That's entirely up to you. The bigger, usually the more secure it is. Okay, so that's all you do uh, to actually encrypt your password. It's uh, very, very simple. So once we encrypt that password, we can now uh, save it in our, our database. So now the problem comes in when the user actually logs in. Now the user logs in. So let's say my password is 1234 here. And then instead I save the hashed version. Now remember, this is a one way, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is one way encryption, okay? So there's no way for the website to know the actual password, the original password. So how then will it know that the password I've entered is correct? Well, it's actually easier than you think. All I have to do is, let's say for example, this is the original data, that's the password, that's my password there, hello. Okay, now and then I, uh, let me remove the string length here so that we can see the actual hash. Okay, so let's say I hash that one and then I get this result. So in order to know that the password the user has entered is correct, all we have to do is get whatever password the user has entered and hash it exactly the same way. So once we hash that, we're going to have a string that looks something like this. And all we have to do now is to compare this string to the string that we have in the database. And then we will know that the user actually knows the actual password. Okay. So even though we cannot revert back to the original password, we at least can know if the password the user has added is actually correct. Now, this is why when you lose your password, they don't send you your password because they actually don't know it. So instead, they send you a link for you to enter a new password. This uh, makes everything more secure because even the owners of the website don't know your password. All right, so this is it about uh, password hashing. In the next video, we're going to look at how to actually implement that into our system and so that we can have hashed passwords.